I haven't explained this one and this one. So maybe and we make a very simple exercise. Very simple exercise just for you to understand a bit more about this. Let's also go through other stuff here. Okay, we have curve container. And now here, if I set one curve, it actually asked me to select a curve, but I don't have a curve. So I need to draw a curve first. Let's do this. Okay, this is my curve, very simple one. And now I can, I can refer this here. Set one curve, I can select it. Now it turned green, as you can see. So this turned green, now there's a curve in there. We can also look at what's in there by just going here and we see referenced planar curve. But now we ask, okay, it's, I can place things here, but what, what can I do with it? You know? So as you said before, well, as you saw before, you can move things around. So we will use a few tools, which you will use a lot. It's transform, you see in transform, and we'll use sets, for example. And this is going to be a very simple script, but you get some, I think, some basic understanding. So we have the curve, we have a curve container where we store the curve here. Now we can uh, move the curve, can create a copy of the curve and move the curve. But well, maybe we do that later. Let's um, look at some other concept here. Let's go into this tool it's called curve. Well, it's re it's related. <laughs> we have a curve. So and here are tools you can do something with that curve, or you can generate curves and stuff. One thing we always use a lot, or I use a lot in grass in Rhino is divide a curve. If you go, if you just go into Rhino and say divide. And ask you how many segments, three segments, and so on. We can do the same here with this referenced curve. By the way, it doesn't change the curve in Rhino. The curve will stay, but it will create. It's it basically created a copy, and the copy is here now. And we can do the same. We can divide the curve. And there's this tool called division. There are different ways on how you do divide things, but let's just use uh, this one. So I have this here. It says curve, count, and kinks. And then I have this uh, symbol for the, for the curve with points. And then I have points, tangents, and parameters. Now I can, as you already probably imagine, we can use this curve and put it here. And by the way, we could also use another curve. And now I, what I do is I go here and say select set multiple curves. I'm going to select both, enter. And now both are have some division automatically. So instead of like me going there, divide, divide, it already divides both. And now I can go here and I see a count and it says 10. If I, if I right click here, actually there's a lot of things, additional input now. You can see that curve, bake, wire display, disconnect. I can disconnect the curve if I want, then it disconnects this curve or the, the, cur the curves. Um, here it says count and it says, if I go here, it says 10. I can input a number here and set integer and say 100. Now I have 100 points division. So that's cool. But I can also go here, commit changes. Now there's no division. Now it's it's suddenly it's, it gives me an error. Not an error, but a, a, a warning. It says input parameters count failed to collect data. Because there's no... I didn't give him a specific count of how many points, how many divisions there should be. So I can take an input and this we will lose a, uh, use a lot, input slider. You can take the input slider and the input slider gi can give us different numbers. So it can give us float point numbers. Oh, I actually need to explain how I got there. So there's two ways on how to use this. If I click, if I double click here on the, on the naming, I get this pop-up window. And if I click here, double click, then I can place a num, I can change the number one. Or I can use this uh, dot here to change the parameter. Um, but the problem is it goes only from zero to one. If I would now input this here, it, it's just give me a half segment. It doesn't really work. So one segment, it's now I have one segment and I get two points. So I could go here and go to the output, which are these two points. Sorry, actually it's four points, but it's, it's two sets. One 
is this set for the first curve, one is the other set for the second curve. So one curve and it shows the coordinates and then the second set with the coordinates, start point, end point. And now I could, if I double click here in the middle again, I can change the num the name. I could say segments, there could be an expression in here, a grip style, shape and text, box and text. I never tried this actually really. Oh yeah, you can put a box, a box here, shape and text. I think that's what I want. That's how I normally use it. Uh, se segments, segments. You can change the name, but you can also change the name on these tools. I can change the type of number. For example, here is a float point number with digits and I can specify how many digits I want. And I can set here the maximum and minimum. So I can set the maximum for 100. Be careful not to set it too high. Suddenly, you know, your your grasshopper will kill you. And then you can set the minimum. You can always also set negative numbers here. But in that case, negative numbers don't make any sense. So you can see the range also. So you see from 0 to 100. You could also say 0 doesn't work anyway. So uh, let's have at least one segment. Now, my range has changed from one segment to 100, from one to 100, and you can see that here. You can test kinks on your own. You get always like a description of what things do. Number of segments, curves, curve to divide, kinks, tangents, parameters. What else could you do with this now? So first of all, I could also remove this. I don't like this. Now this becomes yellow. It's a warning. It didn't, it's this still ran, it's just that here now this tool says well before I had there was a there's there's another curve reference but it's gone now so I could go in here and say manage curve collection so we can set curves we can set multiple curves manage curve collection I can go in here get this list this uh, pop up window with a list and it says here null curve there's one curve is not here and then there's another one is referenced it's this one I can go in here and delete. And now this is green again. And you can also just re-reference, but sometimes this is, if you have huge amounts of select things selected and you ran into the same problem, then you can go in here and clear, or uh, you can manage the, the, the collection of items. So this is one thing. Now we, what's interesting here is that, what, what is the output here? So I could, what, what I can do, if I hide this, if I put a, if I turn off the preview and I put here points, I can see points. If I go on the tangents, then I see this one. Very interesting. The parameters doesn't work, but you can actually see here, these are also coordinates of, the coordinates of the tangents of these points. And then we have parameters. The parameters are actually, they show where along the curve the point is. So if I go back here and show the points, then you have the first point at zero, the second at 2.228963 and so on and, and so on. All right, you can think about the tangents if you want. Tangents, sorry, tangents, is it tangents in English or tangents, tangent, tangents, tangents. Tangents. Tangents, hmm. okay, tangents. So let's keep it like this. Again, we have these, this information is now, the preview is turned off, but it's it all ran, it's all there. If I go in and enable, disable, then this turns dark green and this has no points. Enabled is all there, but it's not shown. Because if I turn this on, then I will see these points twice. They're always green because I, I either touched them here or I touched them here and now they're red. But if I touch this here, they become green. So there's the points are now twice. So that's why I like to turn this off. And if I turn this off, then I only see the Rhino curve. Okay, we can just show you something so you understand a bit on what what the power of of Rhino is. So I can move things. Let's so let's move things. We can move something by or scale or project and stuff. But we can move things. And it's interesting, where is that actually? Ah, here, Euclidean, Euclidean. Move, mirror, move, these are the typical functions, you know, move. Moving geometry, you can move move geometry. So in that case, my geometry, I want to move other points. So I, I could actually move these points here. So I let's do this. So I remove this, 
Hoppala. No, that's not what I want. Sorry. I want to actually keep these points, the original points. These are my original points. And then I use want to use these points and then move them. I could move this or these points. It doesn't matter. I could also move these points. Maybe it's better to understand. So oh, my original points generated here go into this point container. This holds my original points. And then I move them. You ask, you know, why? Why they already moved? Because there is default value in here, which already gives otherwise it, it would generate an error or like a warning so there's a default value in here and you can see it actually when you hover over this it says here zero zero ten zero is x the coordinates the second zero is the y coordinates and ten is this, this the set coordinate and you could change that the same what we did before with the number and now with a slider of course we could also change this here and say set set one vector and now it asks me to set a vector. Changed it in a way I didn't really like. There's another way. So yeah, I can set a vector here. And this is easier if there's some information in the canvas. So I can place, for example, a vertical line. And I have a vertical line. And I can set one vector. And I can, I can set the start point. You know, here's written start point. I can set this here and the end point. Then I have my vector like this. But what if I want to move the vector? What, what if I want to move the vector in the same way I create the, the segments? Then what I can do is I can go here to vector. Vector is basically direction. It's a start point and a direction and an end point. There's a vector. I can I can go here and there's a, a tool it called, it's called unit vectors. It's either a unit to X, Y or Z. And in that case, I want to move it vertically. I could use this unit set vector. I can place this in here and again it moved strangely. It now it doesn't move along this vector anymore. I can remove this line, but it still moved. It's because this also has a default value. And by default this is turned off, by the way. There is no really a preview. There's no preview because a vector is not shown as a thing. It's really just a direction. And it's a unit vector means it moves one. Uh, we can change the factor by using a segment, uh, a slider. So we can use the slider. We can copy things also here, by the way. So we, we don't have to always go back in here. We can get another slider by... So here the sli here's the slider, number slider. Double click, number slider like this. Or because we already set, some, set something here, we could also uh, get this, take this here and control C, control V and this in here now where is it gone okay now this now it moved along the set vector 18.8 .8. and by the way i didn't finish explaining what's actually happening in this number slider i can also go here and put integer numbers then there's no there are no digits i can also use the even numbers or odd numbers but let let's use integers in that case okay i have integers or better we use integers here that makes more sense so we don't have uh 0.8 segments go in here go here in integer uh sorry integer numbers yes and then here we just stay with the float point numbers and now we can move this up and down and now you say oh wow but we did this before we just yes exactly we did this before but now we have a copy of these points and a copy of these points and here it's called geometry we could place here points as well so it makes it it's very clear and we can turn this off preview preview off now the only thing i'm seeing now is these points and these points here that's pretty cool what i can do now is i could create lines between these points so if i go to curve i can go here and primitive and say line I place this in here and says start point and end point Let's say the, the ones below are my start points and the, the ones above are my end point. Ooh. And now I have vertical points. So I think you can already imagine where this goes. You could create parameters for... You, you create a script for stairs where you can change the thread, the depth of the stairs, the, the height of the steps and so on. You know, the amount of steps. So now we can change the segments and it just creates our vertical lines in between. 
We don't have a curve here on top, but we could have also moved the curve with it. So we could have said, we also want to have the curve here. We want to have a copy of that curve here. So in order not to mix it up, we can just copy this, copy, and we want to keep the same, we want to keep the same direction and the same distance, but now it's the curve we want to move. So we can, instead of like placing here the points, we can just connect the original curve, which is here, with this one. Boom. And now you don't see anything, of course, because this is the previous of, but there's still a curve in there. And I know that because it didn't turn orange. So I can either turn this on and I see my curve, or I can go here on curve and put this here and I have a curve. I have my copy of that curve. And now I have my curve here on the lower end which lives in Rhino and here. And I have a copy with a moved and now it's here. And I have my points, sorry, my the lines in between. All the geometry really we see now is, um, and I can maybe turn off the, the, the original one. I can just turn it off. Now I only see what's, what's coming from Grasshopper. This is all from Grasshopper. Now I don't see this curve anymore. I can actually turn this on. Okay, now I have curve, points, vertical lines, curve. So this is one geometry, there's another one, another one, another one. Now in order to bake everything, I can just go here. Let's put this on a new layer. Let's create a new layer here. For, I just rename this. I can so I can say bake and it asks me which layer I want to bake it. I say it in bake and okay. And I can do this with this one. Right click, bake, 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 layer bake. <laughs> Bake, bake, okay, and bake, bake. I said bake a lot now, <laughs> I hope you don't mind. I could save now this script, of course. Let's do that. Save document, points and lines. And now I can see the name point and points and lines here. And if I now close Grasshopper, you actually see it's still here. This is what we baked. But this is now geometry which is inside Rhino inside Rhino. Points, it's all here. It's just for you to understand, Grasshopper is not gone, it's still here. So if we turn this off and we click here, then we still, it's it's just a window. It just closes the window and it's it turns off. Actually now, it, it's all here. If I close this, if I close win the window Grasshopper, then also the content, whatever is in Grasshopper is gone. But it's not gone, it's just uh, hidden. So clicking back on Grasshopper, it's there. It's just this window is now small and I can make it bigger again. I hope you liked this episode. My main light also uh, stopped now. So that's also a sign for me to stop too. And I hope you have a good evening or afternoon. And yeah, see you in the next video. Ciao.